All right, let's start. Welcome to the SDVU Alliance booth, Infocom 2023. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Laurent Mazia from NetGear. I run the uh, product management, the service and the support for all the EV line of switches at NetGear. I'm really happy to present how to design a network for EV over IP for you today. So, what is AV over IP in general? And of course, SDVOE is probably one of the best applications of video over IP. Well, as usual before, during the analog or digital period of times before, you still have your sources on the left with your uh, encoders, previously known as transmitters. They are going to packetize your uh, EV sources into Ethernet packets. And on the right-hand side, you have your decoders, also known as receivers, RXs, they will get those uh, packets and put your AV back on your destination displays and speakers. What is new with AV over IP is that now look at the center, your fabric is now the Ethernet network. So the network back end runs your AV. And of course, it's much more flexible because with SDVUE, for instance, everything is done in software. So everything you need from switching to wireling to scaling to video rolling or picture and picture multi-view, everything is easy, doesn't require any other hardware. But look at the center again and just imagine if your network is not good, if it's not designed properly, your entire AV experience can be ruined. So let's go over it. You need to learn how to properly design an EV of IP network. So I have a very simple slide here. You have a, a main switch on the top right where you have five encoders or TXs and two receivers. And of course, this is an SDVOE presentation, so those encoders and receivers could go uncompressed video at 10 gigabit Ethernet. But for now, just stay general and just call them streams. You have five streams on the top switch, but you have two other floors on the left, and you have two switches every time with two only two receivers, two decoders. How should you calibrate your interconnect between the center of your network and your two floors? You see those red lines? Should you calibrate that for two streams or five streams? Hey, come on, just take a guess. It's not that difficult. The answer can be either five or two. All right, so let me give you the actual answer. You should only calibrate that in theory for two, because what you need to observe, despite the fact that you have five strings coming from the center of the network, you only can have two pairs, only two strings between encoders and decoders from the center of the network to every floor. So in theory, two streams maximum at any period of time could be traveling right to left, all right? So that's what. So before we go into all those designs guidelines, I really want to equip you today. We need to review what's important for you at first when you want to spec and design a Ethernet network for AV of right is the type of AV over IP, the codec or the transport important from a switching standpoint? No, the answer is not because for Ethernet switchers, it doesn't matter. There's no good or bad AV over IP. All those packets are the same. Is the latency going to be something that you want to explore when you come to, you know, select your uh, network backend latency, you know, the number of frames you can sustain or the delay? Between source and destinations, the answer is no, because all switches get more fast, faster than that. Switches measure latency in microseconds, thousands of milliseconds. So you will not select any network backend based on latency. All switches are good for that. They will not induce any more latency to your AV over IP. So what remains, well, bandwidth. Bandwidth is very important. I just did the size with you. You've seen those red lines, two streams, five streams. You need to calibrate your network. You have the right, you have to, to select the right network speeds at the access 1G compressed or better 10G uncompressed. And then you need to take care of your backbone and your core and all your interconnect. 
speaker. And last but not the least, what is really important is the multicast. 99.9% .9 of AV implications are based on multicasting. So you've got to require multicast IGMP at the very minimum at the layer 2 of your network. You need to check the boxes. IGMP querier, IGMP snooping, and IGMP fast leave are the three components you can do with that. Okay? So bandwidth and multicast IGMP are the very important factor. Let's go back to the design. But before that, I have a good news for you, you know, because if you are afraid of multicast and AV over IP, if you have a job, your first AV over IP job, you can trust uh, the Netgear line because you just take a Netgear AV switch out of the box, you put the power on it, you don't have any idea of the IP address of that switch, you don't even want to connect to the AV user interface, you just connect your SDVE encoders and decoders, plug your controller, you can discover it all and start to do the matrix and just play it with your brand new AV over IP installation. All Netgear AV line switches are pre-configured by default for you so that they can run right perfectly out of the box. Okay, so you know what? After the good news, I have some bad news. Because IGMP is a great protocol. This is how you manage multicast and AV over IP on your network. But there are some inherent challenges. With IGMP, based on the IGMP standard, you are flooding the entire multicast to the so-called IGMP query. Look at this example. You have a job, you have a floor in that corporate a building where you have your local multicast with 40 brand new SDVE encoders, 40 streams and 40 receivers. Everybody stays local, right? But then the client tells you, you know what, no issue, but I just want to take five or six streams at max to the rest of my corporate network. So because you did the math, you say, well, there will be only five to six streams. I'm going to calibrate my uh, uh, uplink to the corporate network with two 40 gig Ethernet links, 80 gigabit Ethernet of bandwidth, five, six streams, good enough, right? Well, wrong, because if the IGMP querier is somewhere else on that network, you are going to flood the fully uh, and, uh, streams straight to the querier. And the multicast flooding is your worst enemy for AV of writing. Hopefully with SDVE and Netgear, you covered, because Netgear understood that very problem years ago and re-engineered IGMP in such a way that, of course, it's backward compatible, nobody knows, but in the background, IGMP Plus is at work. IGMP will always stay local so that you can trust your calculation and just calculate your uplinks the way you need. So what is IGMP Plus? Well, if you have SDVE encoders and decoders doing multicasting on the left-hand side, that multicast will stay local. And if you have one subscriber here on that chart, the TX4, that subscriber will subscribe to that stream and only that stream will traverse the network and get there. So with IGMP Plus, we covered. Of course, we didn't stop there. We have automatic trunking so that you don't have to configure anything in between switches. We have automatic lagging, inter-channel link aggregation so that you don't have to configure anything either. So frankly, with the uh, the SDVE Alliance, uh, more than a hundred uh, proud members uh, uh, providing the fantastic SDVE video over IP technology with a good network backend with the Netgear AV line will be covered. Let's back to the core of that presentation. We want to uh, look at the design. And for you, I have this uh, brand new example of what's different between the IT and the EV, right? How do you design networks in the IT world, on the left-hand side? How do you design networks on the right hand side for AV. Well, first thing you can you may say that switchers are the same. Frankly, for me, not really. You need good, capable multicast switches uh, for AV over IP. But for the sake of that example, I use the same good EV grade switches in the IT world. The left, the network design is fundamentally different, right? On the right hand side, with AV, Pro EV, and SDVE applications, you want to stay simple. 
Keep it simple. Two tier spine and leaf or core access. You want to have a streamlined uh, design so that your IGMP with uh, the Netgear IGMP Plus work just fine. If you need to have an active, active redundant core so that you eliminate the single point of failure, you will want to take two very capable core switches, stack them together. But with stacking, you will understand that the entire multicast from the network will be replicated between the two cores. So you need to calibrate that stack link, I should say several, many, many stack links in such a way that you can carry the entire multicast. By stacking those two switches, all switches at the edge can simply do link aggregation because for them, there's only one core. You can ADCP, auto lag and auto trunk, and the network will work perfect without any service interruption should of your one of your two core switches fail. Now look at the IT side of things. Nightmare, right? It's it's very cumbersome because they are going to stack everything everywhere. IT uh, admins like to stack everywhere the switches, at the edge, in the labs, in the server room. And well, stacking is good, but stacking is, is not good for AV. You know what? Because stacking always replicates multicast. So you don't have the benefits from IGMP+. Plus. You will flood your multicast like crazy in between every of those switches. And this is absolutely not best practice for AV over IP. So Please retain that. Stacking is good for IT, not for AV. You want to keep it simple, standalone, doing LACP. And of course, you can still stack two switches at the pool for active, active, non-blocking a uh, pool. All right. So going to uh, the next question, I have a good one for you. This is not a stack. This is a daisy chain, or maybe the bottom switch is the core, the central switch, right? And we have two other switches connecting to it. And we have a 10 gig uh, SDV AV over IP installation with 72 encoders and 72 decoders. And look at the disposition. It's, it's actually quite neat. We have 24 encoders and 24 receivers on every switch. And the network design here, we have only six 40 gig Ethernet links in between the switches. It's a link aggregation automatic lag, six times 40, 240 gigabit Ethernet. Does it work? Do you vet that design? Or do you think today I'm tired and uh, I did my job right? Ah, come on, don't be shy. Just a yes or a no. Or can be a I don't know. Well, let's take things in order. You have your 24 encoders on the top right. Let's say that the 24 receivers down there, they subscribe to those streams. So you will have 24 10G, 240 gig of video streams going uh, south at the bottom, right? Now, if you have the 24 receivers that can subscribe to the 24 encoders on the bottom switch in the top left, that's going to work too. But what about the reverse? Maybe you were going to say that it wouldn't work. If you just forget that by nature, Ethernet is bidirectional. So the network technology, Ethernet, is by nature bidirectional. So you have 240 gig left and right on the same links. So because of that, if you do respect that topology, you can make it work gracefully because you are non-blocking. It is working. Let's progress on this uh, design uh, course and uh, review another possible design when this time you want to be absolutely line right, left to right, right to left, anything, anywhere, anytime. So to do that uh, in this example, I have my glasses, but um, I, I, yes, I see now we have 32 encoders and 32 receivers on every switch. If you want to make it absolutely line weight, you need to dispose and place those encoders, decoders symmetric way this way so that you can send and receive 240 gig from the network core, which is of course, line wide with eight 40 gig links, this time using a core switch. And by doing that, you have a non-blocking installation. All right? So my best advice today, how to properly design AV or IP networks, keep it simple, keep it straight, two tiers only, core access, 
And if you really need a one-to-one -one metric scalability, anything, anywhere, anytime, you've got to be line weight. I have a last example. This is one of the largest SDVU installation in the world. This is the American Dream on the East Coast in New Jersey, 640 uh, brilliant SDV endpoints in a single network. Here you see a square at the center. This is a double multi-chassis link aggregation using the Netgear 4500s. By achieving a double tier multi-chassis link aggregation and lag architectures, we can actually deliver uh, with 10G uh, switches at the edge a non-blocking installation up to 320 by 320. Of course, we don't expect to design all that by yourself. So let me go to the conclusion. You got to know Netgear better, maybe. So Netgear started with SDVE, but you know, on your job, you don't have only video over IP distribution. You have audio with Dante Q6, AES 67, AVD. So Netgear partnered with hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, AV manufacturers to pack certified configurations in AV profiles. So at least you don't spend time configuring the network, the profiles, you just apply them to the ports you want. After the hardware and software, what is very important are the service and the support. So the Netgear Pro AV design team is here to help you anytime, anywhere across the globe. We have a team of certified AV IT experts capable of answering any question before a project, during a project, or even after a project something got wrong. This is ProEV Design, Netgear.com, ProEV Design, Netgear.com, free of charge. We want to help you. 99% of all these requests are solved the same day. All right. So now you know maybe more why Netgear by far became the most recommended switch platform for a lot of AV applications from residential to professional AV to broadcast even, you know, uh, healthcare and uh, live events with lighting. The switches we want to use with you for properly design, configuring and run the fabric of your AV over IP are here. Those switches are special. They are engineered for AV over IP. We start with the 4250 for your audio, for your video distribution. We will go with the 4300s and the 4350 brand new ones that are introduced at this show in Infocom 2023. 12 brand new uh, models and the 4500B core like in the American train. So allow me to show you the brand new ones. The blue ones are shipping at the end of the month. The green ones are shipping later in January next year. All those 4350s are already proven and certified with SDVE for 10 gigabit uncompressed video distribution. Uh, all the 24 ports, all the 48 ports, all the 10 gig switches come with PoE so that you can remove power adapters and directly inject power over Ethernet on your video endpoints, encoders and decoders, PoE plus, PoE plus plus. You have 25G uplinks that come free almost on every of those switches so that you can pack 10 encoders and use link aggregation to send 10 streams with very static switches. And if you have a more ambitious and large installations, we, you will then provide those 100 gig uplinks to you so that you can have line weight installations of large packs of 40 encoders or decoders. Thank you for following this presentation. Again, please visit the SDVOE Alliance booth and the Netgear AV Line booth at Infocom. I want to thank you. Have a great show.